everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Today we're gonna take a look at creating this mixed up, spinning, multi-circle illusion effect in Photoshop. Check it out. There you have it. And if you do enjoy this video, make sure of course you subscribe to the channel. And also, if you really love the video, pick up a copy of my Photoshop course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. This channel is funded by viewers just like you. There's a link that appears right up there. You can pick up the course. There's also a link down in the bio. So if you're five minutes into the video and you decide you want to pick it up, hey, you can do that as well. Let's get this one started. So here we go. Uh, I've got this sort of four up display version of the image here because well, maybe we'll do a, a quick brief overview on how to create all four of these variations. It's, it's relatively simple, uh, but let's get started. Uh, so it all begins with a photo. You can do any photo you want. It can be a picture of you, somebody else, a stock photo, Photo, a photo of a dog or a can of soda, whatever you want. And what we want to do is come over here and jump into quick mask mode. That's this little button, this little icon beneath our color selector. Click on that and it's going to enter us into what's called quick mask mode. You can see here it says quick mask. Yep, great. Now there is one thing I want you to do. Double click on that quick mask mode icon, right? And you're going to get this quick mask options dialog box. By default, masked areas is what is selected. We want to make sure selected areas is what we choose choose. You can choose any color you like. I just roll with the red because it's just what I roll with. Uh, and I'm going to hit okay. Then what I'm going to do is come over here and grab the brush tool, grab the brush tool. I'm going to right click and make sure I'm using a relatively large, fairly soft edge brush here. I've got my hardness set to 50%. So a 250 pixel brush, 50% hardness. Great. And you also want to make sure that your foreground is black and not white. So just hit the letter D. It will make sure that your foreground and background color are reset to the default black and white and black will then be your foreground color. All right. So with this set to black, we're just going to go ahead and paint over her. But you can see right there when I painted, I'm just painting black onto her. That's not right. Remember, our color should be red. So I'm going to hit Command or Control Z to undo. What we need to do is make sure that we once more click and enter into quick mask mode. If you're not in quick mask mode, you're just going to actually paint whatever your foreground color is. Now that we're in quick mask mode, you can see how it's that sort of semi-opaque red overlay. And I'm going to paint a rough selection over the subject of the photo, which in this case is the girl. And you can see as evidenced by these little bits of the hair, a very rough selection will suffice. Don't worry about it being anywhere near exact. And then to, to convert this to a selection, simply hit the letter Q and it will load that painted area as a selection. That's why we went and got into our quick mask options and chose selected areas, not masked areas. So that that's what allows us to paint and then convert the painted area to a selection. All right, what we wanna do now is pop her up onto her own layer. So we're gonna hit, uh, the, use, use the hotkey Command or Control J. See it cut her out and brought her up onto her own layer, but she's still down there on the bottom layer too. We want to duplicate this layer, so we're just going to hit Command or Control J again, and I'm going to shut off this topmost layer. Now what we're going to do is double click on the name for the lower cutout layer, and I'm just going to name this Effect or you know, something like that. Then I'm going to right click on the layer and choose to convert it to a smart object. Convert to smart object. And now that we have the smart object, we're gonna begin kind of messing things up a little bit. So it all begins up here under filter. We're gonna go distort and we're gonna choose wave. Now here under wave, there's a few things you wanna do. I have this set exactly as I want it to be. I've got my number of generators set to 30. I have the wavelength at a minimum of 45 and a maximum of 60. The amplitude, a minimum of one and a maximum of 50. And the scaling, it's gonna only scale horizontal basically, which is gonna, which is why we have all these sharp lines pushing straight out left and right and whereas vertical scaling we have as low as it goes just at 1% don't really mess with that uh, and then the type by default sign is the type we're gonna change this to square you can see the difference of effect there right there's sign versus square uh, and you can randomize it if you want to just mix it up a little bit that's fine and then undefined areas we're gonna choose to repeat edge pixels right down there go ahead and hit OK now the beauty of this and part of the thing that's great about the smart object is we can hit this little downward facing arrow and we have our little wave effect down here. So if we decided we didn't like this, we could double click on it, jump back into the filter and adjust it. But we actually love it. So we're going to go filter. We're going to apply another wave. We're going to distort wave and we're going to apply the same exact wave, 30, 45, 60, so on and so forth. Go ahead and hit okay. So you can see we're really blasting her out sideways and it's just getting all these like squiggly, you know, very, very squiggled streaky lines coming out of, you know, her shoulders and her hair and her face everywhere. That looks great. Now we're gonna go back to filter, distort, and we're gonna choose ripple this time. So ripple, and by default, you probably have your size set to small. 
whoops, small, which is not quite what we want. We want large ripples and an amount somewhere between, yeah, probably 100 to 200 will be great. I'm going to go with like 180, 180% that is, and I'm going to hit OK. And again, you can notice that our, our filters, they're just stacking up here, just like layers beneath our smart object. That's great. So we have full control of them if we need to go back and adjust anything later on. Next up, we're going to go filter, distort again, and this time we're gonna choose zigzag. So we're just gonna continue this effect. Now with zigzag, you can really choose to, to spin the effect, if you will, in any direction, uh, either left or right, depending on whether or not you go negative 100 or positive 100. I'm gonna keep on at negative 100, I like that. You also have a few options down here, pond ripples around the center. Around the center's not too bad. Uh, out from the center is really not going to work for what we're doing here. Uh, but pond ripples, I think, is just like a nice, uh, I don't know, kind of a nice compromise right down the middle. Although we'll look at it out around center. Nah, no. Pond ripples is, is what it's going to be. And I'm going to kind of push it to the max here. Negative 100 for me and 20 ridges. You can see less ridges. It just kind of is less wavy and spinny and trippy looking. We're going to hit OK. We're going to apply that. And we're going to apply this same exact effect a second time. So we're going to go filter. And we can just choose zigzag right here at the top. And the same dialog box will pop up. We can go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. So we've got two waves, a ripple, and two zigzags. And now that we've got that, we're going to add a second ripple. So we're going to go filter, distort, ripple and we're going to use the same exact uh, settings we used before 180 percent size large go ahead and hit okay and it's just going to mix it up even more so it's really these crazy like radio frequency scattered looking waves you know blasting away from the edges of her but the problem's pretty obvious here we can't see her she's completely covered up so we need to somehow blend these back into the photo and that's why we have this second copy of her up here so we're going to hold down our command or control key and click on that layer thumbnail to load that layer as a selection i'm going to go select modify contract and we're going to contract this by oh let's go with like 100 pixels this is all going to depend on how large your image is so 100 pixels only takes me back to there but if you're working with a smaller photo it might take you back way too far you want to move back from the edge of your photo you know about that far the edge of the subject i should say in your photo you want to move back about that far then we're going to go select modify and we're going to choose to feather the edge of the selection and i think something like 75 pixels is probably perfect uh go ahead and hit okay great it's just going to soften that up and now here's one of the really great things about smart filters we can come down and use the layer mask for this smart filter select that layer mask by clicking on it and we can simply go image adjustments invert to fill that area with black and then go select, deselect to get rid of that. And you can see we just fade those crazy radio waves into the edges of her, uh, her hair, her arm, everything here. So next up, if we go and look at a copy of the larger image, we have all of these circular lines, these concentric circles. There's a few different ways to create concentric circles here in Photoshop, but I think this is one of the easier ways to do it. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. Number one, we can delete this extra copy of her that we have. I'm going to collapse these smart filters to hide them. And we're going to create a new layer. So I'm going to come down here and just choose the new layer icons. I'm going to select that. And we can name this layer circles or really whatever you want. And we're going to fill this with white. So we'll go edit, fill. We're going to choose the contents here to be white, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, we want our foreground color here to be black, and we're going to come up here to Filter. We're going to choose Filter Gallery, and here in Filter Gallery, I probably already have it selected, we want to come under the Sketch folder, right, and we want to choose Halftone Pattern. doesn't make a lot of sense because what you're going to see when you first get Halftone Pattern is probably your pattern type being dots. We don't want dots. We want to change the pattern type to Circle. And in the case of my image, a size of three with a heavy contrast works well. Maybe I'll reduce the contrast just a little bit to kind of soften the edges of my rings. So I'm going with like a size of three, a contrast of 35 looks great. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we get this super like almost difficult to look at series of concentric circles. Now, in order to blend all of this together, I'm going to come up here to my blend modes and I'm going to set this to the layer blend mode of overlay. You could also choose soft light. I'm rolling with overlay and I'm simply going to reduce the layer opacity by dragging on the word opacity itself. I'm going to drag it back to about 70% or right around there, like high 60s, low 70s. That's going to look good. You can see there's before, there's after. So it's this very tight pattern of spinning circles added to this crazy uh, squiggled effect that's shooting off of her body. It looks really cool. 
And now we're going to kind of boost the craziness uh, another level up. I'm going to merge all layers to a new layer by using the hotkey Command Shift Option E. That would be Control Shift Alt E on the PC. And you can see I've got a copy of all of our layers all merged to one layer. And I'm going to call this red. And what I'm going to do here is double click on this layer, or you could actually easier maybe go layer, layer style, blending options. And right here we have R, G, and B. Well, I'm going to shut off G, and I'm going to shut off B and I'm gonna hit OK. Doesn't look like anything's changed. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this layer up just a little bit by going Edit, Transform. Well, we can just choose Free Transform here. And then here under Width and Height, we're gonna take it for, from 100% to like, I don't know, it's, it's something subtle, 101% maybe. And maybe it should go to like 102%. Something like that looks good. And we'll come over here, hit the little check icon to commit the change. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, well, let me just make sure I don't undo that. You can see there's this red uh, kind of like fringing now on everything. And that's what that layer is doing. It's giving us this sort of red channel version of the image. It's really pretty cool. But it's just kind of giving you more of that crazy, trippy, holographic, almost illusion effect. Now you can also just straight up shift this layer any way you want. I could grab the move tool and use my arrow key and just nudge it you know, to the left a little or something. That looks kind of cool. I'll just leave it at that. And let's apply a couple adjustment layers and get ourselves into the position where we can you know, create these multicolored versions of uh, this photo. So what we'll do is we'll begin first with a color balance adjustment. I'm gonna work with the mid-tones first. I'm gonna push some reds into the mid-tones and I think I'm gonna push some blues into the mid-tones as well. That looks kind of cool. Then I'm gonna come over here to uh, the highlights and I'm gonna push some greens in just a little bit. I don't wanna go too crazy. And I think I'll also push a little yellow into those highlights as well. Just a little bit. There we go. And lastly, we'll go to the shadows. And I'm going to push a little bit of green into the shadows and also a little bit of blue into the shadows. Something kind of like that. You can just kind of push and pull yours until, until you're getting the color that you want. So you can see we're getting a little bit of like a very high contrast, Lomo type effect. If it's too much, the beauty of adjustment layers, of course, reduce that opacity right there uh, in the layers panel. Just tone the effect back a little bit and find, you know, the real sweet spot. And now here's Here's where we get kind of uh, the coloring that we want. Well, I'm sorry, we'll get the coloring in just a step. Let's add a photo filter first. So I just added the photo filter adjustment layer. You could actually get coloring using the photo filter, uh, but I think a more effective way is the way we're gonna do it in a, uh, a moment. I'm gonna choose the color option, and I'm gonna go with a very bright yellow here. So something like that, so that's ECE 900, and I'm not turning on preserve luminosity. That's, that's turned on by default. I'm gonna leave that turned off, and I'll just leave the density at 25%. That's gonna work pretty well for us. And we're gonna come up here to the blend modes and I'm gonna choose the multiply blend mode. You can see it's just intensifying this a little bit. And if it's a little bit too dark or high contrast for you, again, you can reduce the opacity of the color balance a little bit more or just go ahead and reduce the opacity of the photo filter a little bit. I think I'll do that, that looks pretty good. So this would be our one version, right? This is this kind of colored version down here in the bottom right corner. If we wanna do any sort of colored version, it's as simple as adding a gradient map adjustment layer. We can very quickly turn this into like a duo tone image, I can just select my gradient stripe, we can double click on the black, and uh, we'll come up here and go with like a blue, so I'll go with like a dark, 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 dark blue as my uh, initial color, maybe even darker and more saturated than that, and then we'll go with like a very, very light blue as our sort of highlight color. So the, the very dark blues are mapped to the very shadowy parts of the image and the very bright light blues are mapped to the, you know, more like the highlights of the photo. So you can see now we have this sort of blue version of the photo. Now over here I had a little bit darker blue rolling, but the same principle applies if you want to do a magenta or a yellow or a green or, you know, whatever. I mean, I've got a bunch of different, uh, if you go watch my tutorial on duotones, you can download this entire duotone uh, tutorial pack and you can use any of these. They all do different crazy things. Uh, so all kinds of coolness that you can get uh, just by messing around with some of that stuff. Uh, and you can just have some fun with it. So I think I'll just bump my uh, UI out of the way, bring this up to full screen. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to be it. If you do follow along with this tutorial and you really enjoy it, make sure you go follow me on Instagram. But if you, if you create this, upload it to Instagram, tag me. My Instagram username is at tutvid. Tag me. I'll, I see everything that comes to my Instagram feed. I try to respond to everything, really. I'll give you a like. I'll give you a comment. And who knows what'll happen. So if you do create this and you really enjoy it, make sure you go and share it on Instagram. Tag me in the Instagram post so I can see it and interact with you. And uh, for creating this trippy, multi-circled illusion effect in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. 
And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.